Hi friends, hope you all are fine. I am also keeping good. Before starting my next video, I would like to thank you all. After I publish my two videos, I have received many personal comments, so which gives me a positive energy to prepare more videos. So please be support me like this. If you have any personal comments, suggestions, you can free to contact me or you can type it in the comment box. Okay, so as I said you in the last video, today I am going to take the menstrual cycle. So let's we start with our today's topic, menstrual cycle. In a life cycle, woman's body is vulnerable to variety of changes. These changes occur in every month positively for pregnancy, so which is called menstrual cycle. Once the ovum is not fertilized, the uterine lining sheds and which lead to hemorrhage called menstruation. In a girl, menstruation starts at the age of 10 to 15. That means once the girl becomes puberty, the menstruation starts, so which is called menarche. The ending of menstruation is called menopause, which is takes place at the age of 50. The duration of menstrual cycle varies woman to woman. Usually the normal menstrual cycle uh, is 28 to 30 days. Due to some variation in the lifestyle and hormones which can be vary 21 to 40 or sometimes more. The first day of menstrual bleeding is considered as the first day of menstrual cycle. The total count of ovum in a life cycle of woman is fixed at the time of birth. After that, once the girl becomes puberty under the influence of hormone which are released every month from the ovary which is called the ovulation. So this process will be continued until she reaches menopause. Next we will discuss about the phases of menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is divided into four phases, namely menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulatory phase and luteal phase. So first we will see about menstrual phase. This phase is characterized by the shedding of blood due to breakdown of the inner uterine wall that is called a endometrium. This menstrual fluid consists of mucus, blood, cells of the endometrial lining and unfertilized ovum. The first day of bleeding is considered as day 1 of menstrual cycle. This lasts for 3 to 5 days. Normal menstrual bleeding is about 40 to 50 ml. However, under various medical conditions, it can be up to 125 ml also. This is one of the prime reasons why females are more prone to be anemic. Next is the follicular phase. In this phase, the primary follicle start developing into mature graphian follicle. The endometrium also start proliferating. The uterus start preparing for another pregnancy. It is also called the pre-ovulatory phase. This phase is characterized by the proliferation of primary follicle to form graphian follicles. It generally occurs from day 6 to day 13 of a normal menstrual cycle. Low level of progesterone stimulate follicle stimulating hormone in the ovary. Under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, many primary follicles in the ovary start maturing but only one graphian follicles develop. As soon as the graphian follicle is formed, it starts producing estrogen hormone from the theca interna layer. Estrogen hormones provide negative feedback regulating to stop the synthesis and secretion of the follicle stimulating hormone. This prevents development of multiple graphian follicles. Thus, only one ovum is released during each menstrual cycle. Estrogen hormone is responsible for the regeneration of the endometrium layer which become 2 to 3 mm in thick. It also stimulates the release of LH hormone and hence is the primary sex hormone of females. This phase ends when ovulation takes place. Next we will see the third phase of menstrual cycle that is ovulatory phase. 
high estrogen will stimulate the pituitary gland to decrease the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone and increase the secretion of luteinizing hormone a high level of luteinizing hormone occurs between 12th day of menstrual cycle and is called as lh surge this luteinizing hormone is responsible for ovulation that means the release of secondary oocytes from the graafian follicle this oocyte is arrested in the metaphase stage of meiosis 2 until fertilization there is an increase in body temperature after ovulation due to a high level of sex hormones after ovulation the egg will move to the fallopian tube and wait for sperm to fertilize in the absence of fertilization the egg will degenerate after 1 to 2 days of ovulation the day of ovulation in a menstrual cycle can be calculated by the formula n minus 14 where the n is the number of day of the menstrual cycle so last is the luteal phase it is also called the secretory phase or post ovulatory phase in a normal menstrual cycle it is a period between 15 to 28 days the ruptured graafian follicle changes to the corpus luteum under the influence of luteinizing hormone this corpus luteum secrete progesterone hormone mainly and a small amount of estrogen this progesterone is responsible for the further thickening up to 5 mm of the endometrial lining also it carry out vascularization of the endometrial lining progesterone hormone will remain high throughout the gestation or pregnancy period if fertilization takes place thus the progesterone hormone is responsible for maintaining pregnancy progesterone carry out negative feedback inhibition of gonadotropin releasing hormone thus preventing multiple ovulation at this phase is taking place under the influence of progesterone hormone which is secreted by the corpus luteum this phase is called the luteal phase if fertilization does not take place then this corpus luteum regress to corpus albicans which reduce progesterone level and the onset of the next menstrual cycle so this is about the four phases of menstrual cycle once again i will explain about the hormonal influence in menstrual cycle as i said you just before luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone estrogen and progesterone are responsible for each cycle so the cycle can be categorized into three ways ripening of follicle stage ovulation stage and ripening of corpus luteum stage so here in ripening of follicular stage the luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone and estrogen are responsible so once the estrogen become peak that is just before the ovulation then once the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone become at the peak ovulation takes place so after the ovulation the estrogen level become reduced and by the time the progesterone level get increased if there is fertilization occurs the corpus luteum produce progesterone and this progesterone will be support the pregnancy here we can wind up our today's topic so i hope i have explained this menstrual cycle in the simplest form so again and again i am insisting you don't hesitate to send your comments and suggestions so which always gives me a positive energy to present it according to your interest okay till that bye bye take care so next class we will meet with an another midwifery topic bye